Good morning and welcome to our service uh, this morning. We're back at St Margaret's. Um, to be at St Thomas's last week and we'll probably be at St Thomas's next week. Um, just so that you can um, see the church. Oh, even if you can't be there. Um, only notice is that really is that we're currently thinking about what we're going to be doing in the autumn. Um, in terms of special events like harvest and um, remembrance and Advent and the Christmas fair and carol service, all those things that we normally do, those special events. And we plan to do something and we're just um, looking at um, how we can do that. Probably have two different plans, one for if we're under restrictions and one for if we're not, uh, but please look out for those and for how you might be able to help. Let's spend a few um, moments in silence as we come before the God who is with us always. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him thanks, praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. And we can say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And part of that cleansing is for us to offer our sins to him and ask his forgiveness. So we come to our time of confession and as we've been doing over the last few weeks, the response oral. So as I say, when I get to the bit that says, Father, forgive us, we'll all say together, save us and help us. So let's confess our sins to our gracious Father. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. And the Lord enriches with his grace and nourishes with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, Amen. And the collect set aside for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, after church. It's this prayer. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please you. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And knowing that we are saved, we are free, free to offer him all that we have. So we're going to sing, take my life and let it be. reading for today is taken from Matthew chapter 15 verses 10 to 28 then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them listen and understand it is not what goes into your mouth that makes you ritually unclean what Rather, what comes out of it makes you unclean. Then the disciples came to him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees have their feelings hurt by what you've said? Every plant which my Father in heaven did not plant will be pulled up, answered Jesus. Don't worry about them. They are blind leaders of the blind. And when one back blind man leads another, both fall into a ditch. Peter spoke up, explain this saying to us. 
Jesus said to them, You are still no more intelligent than the others. Don't you understand? Anything that goes into your mouth goes into your stomach and then on out of your body. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And these are the things that make you richly unclean. For from your heart come the evil ideas which lead you to kill, commit adultery, and do other immoral things, to rob, lie, and slander others. These are the things that make you unclean. But to eat without washing your hands, as they say you should, this doesn't make you unclean. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out, have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She's following us and making all this noise. And Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered. But even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, You are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. This is the word of the Lord. So we have two parts of this reading. Um, in the first part, Jesus says something that shocks the listeners of the day. And in the second part, he sh says something that is probably a shock to our ears. But these two readings, as I read them, came with challenges to me, which I want to explore now. So in the first part, what he says it basically is that the rules, it's not about the rules. It's about what's in your heart. And you can follow the rules, you can follow the law and still have a heart that turns away from God. That was shocking to them because Israel was built on the law and the law was God and Jesus came to fulfill that law. They came to fulfill it in a way that went beyond, not that wiped it away, but just went beyond it. And they were shocked by it. But as I read that, I was challenged by it. I was challenged by two things. The first thing was, what rules do I live by? See, grace is a hard thing. And I think we all of us build rules. We have rules about what you can do on the altar area. We have rules about how you should behave in church, what things you can and can't do. Well, they've changed over the years, but we all tend to have those rules within us. So what rules have you got that God might be challenging you on? And the second challenge is this. 
When did I list, last listen to myself? You see, if Jesus is right and what I say reveals my heart, then surely, if I want to change my heart to Jesus's, I need to listen to what I say, properly listen to what I say, to read the posts on social media, if I did that, to think back over what I've said to people through the day and what that reveals about my heart and to ask God's forgiveness and seek to change so that the words that I speak are good and uplifting to those around me. So I've been challenged in the first part twice <laughs> about what rules I might have and about listening to what I say so that I would know my heart. And in the second part of this story, of this reading, this woman comes, a Canaanite, and asks for mercy. Now, a few weeks ago, we saw Jesus who wanted to be alone, putting that off so that he could show mercy to people. And yet he doesn't hear and says something that seems quite hurtful to her for us. It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. It's a shock. And I think Matthew deliberately put these two bits together to sort of emphasize what was happening here. The thing is, Jesus had a mission. His mission was to save the world, but it was to follow a certain order. Israel would come first. He would preach to Israel. And then Israel would preach to the world. That was the divine order of things. That was his mission. And he mustn't be distracted from his mission. That's a challenge for me. See, I believe that each one of us have a mission. When Jesus went up to heaven, he said, commissioned us to make disciples of the whole world. And we each have a part to play in that. That's our mission, and we mustn't be distracted by it. We must push on. We must discover what it is, and it does not end. It doesn't end as we get older. Just look in the Bible how Jesus, how God raised up people of age to do miraculous things. It doesn't matter about our education or how rich or how poor we are. He has a job for us each to do and we mustn't be distracted by it. We mustn't be distracted by what we can't do. We mustn't be distracted by COVID. We mustn't be distracted just as Jesus refused to be distracted. The last bit of the passage is the hope. But the woman refused to go away. She recognised who he was. She recognised his mission. She understood that Israel came first. But she also understood that the rest of the world would follow. And what she was asking for was that blessing, that future blessing now. And her faith revealed to it, to her. And she got that future blessing. We look forward to a future blessing. 
when Christ returns and the kingdom's fully established. But the kingdom is here and now. And we can look in some part to those future blessings and expect them. But we need to move on. We need to follow our calling to make disciples of the whole world, to do what we can and allow God to do the miraculous work that he can. Let's declare our faith in that God. Ask these questions, the response is we believe and trust in him, which we'll all say. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come now to our time of prayer. So let us pray. As the Canaanite woman did. To the son of David. Father, we thank you that we are blessed that you have called us to be the church. We ask that you would give us ears that hear what we say and change our hearts so that those words we say follow yours and bring grace and blessings to those around us. Father God, there's so much suffering around us and we call out to you now, Son of David, have mercy upon us. Pour out your healing grace on all those who suffer either mentally or physically, on those who are grieving. Bless them comfort them, heal them. Son of David, we lay down our lives for you. Help us to be your voice. Help us to be your hands. Help us to be your feet in Brightside and Winkerbank. Amen. And we continue in prayer by saying together the diocesan prayer. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit we may as the Diocese of Sheffield both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're coming on to the end of our service now. Um, so we've just got the blessing and the dismissal and then we're going to sing, I will set my face. But first the blessing. May God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the world, Lord. Thank you for being watching today and joining us in worship. I hope you have a good week. Uh, let's join together and declare that we're going to set our face to seek the Lord. Goodbye. Savior, my wonderful God.